Welcome to Daily Office Devotions. I'm Reggie Kidd of the Cathedral Church of St. Luke in Orlando, Florida. Thanks for joining me on this Tuesday following Trinity Sunday. Given where Easter falls this year, our readings should have us in proper six of the daily lectionary in the Book of Common Prayer. But my teaching schedule with my friends at the Robert E. Weber Institute for Worship Studies has caused me to scramble things a bit. This week, we're contemplating passages from proper four. I want to give some attention to the early chapters of the book of Ecclesiastes and of Paul's letter to the Galatians. Thanks for your flexibility. Next week, we will be back on track with readings from the daily lectionaries, proper seven. If death truly marks the end, and if death itself is a slide into nothingness, then everything before it is nothingness too, a kind of living death. Trying to live a life worth being remembered for? Pointless. For there is no enduring remembrance of the wise or of fools, seeing that in the days to come all will have been long forgotten. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 16. Ambitious projects and Solomon's were nothing if not ambitious and lavish, from palaces to stables to, of course, God's very house. It'll all be left for people who didn't toil for it. Again, pointless. This also is vanity. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 18 and 19. Solomon's perspective is one of a life turned in on itself, and it's not pretty. But at the end of this paragraph, in verses 24 through 26, Solomon gets a glimmer of insight. If you see God as the giver of life, it's possible to receive food and drink as a gift, and even to find enjoyment in the work he gives you to do. If the goal is to please him and not self or posterity, it's just possible that wisdom and knowledge and joy will come. I linger today over one observation from Paul's letter to the Galatians. That is, that it takes him a decade and a half from his conversion before he puts pen to paper. Some things take time. It's either 17 years or 14 years from Paul's conversion and initial contact with the Jerusalem leaders of the church, scholars still debate the time frame, until Paul appears to them to lay out his understanding of his call. A lot of water has gone under the bridge. Time in Arabia, whether in seclusion or under tutelage, and a decade of ministry in a church of mixed Jews and Gentiles in Syrian Antioch. When Paul does emerge for this consultation, it's clear that four things have gelled for him. We can be grateful for them and that he took the time to get them right. First, it is God's sheer grace in Christ that saves, which is largely the burden of this letter. Second, it is the shape of God's plan to bring Jews and Gentiles together as equal citizens in the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Third, it is Paul's mission to pursue the Gentile inclusion part of God's plan, so much so that he will risk alienating key Jerusalem leadership. Galatians chapter 2, verses 3 through 5, and tomorrow's passage. Fourth, Paul is so eager for his fellow Jews to understand God's reconciling love and power that he plans to raise support among his Gentile churches to support the impoverished Jewish church in Jerusalem. They asked only one thing, that we remember the poor, i.e. the church in Jerusalem, a story for another day, which was actually what I was eager to do. Galatians chapter 2, verse 10. Let me commend to you two ways to pray for 
for God's good timing to show itself for you and for our world, even if his timing may seem slow. In your own life first, I pray you not feel like you are stuck in some sort of perpetual hovering pattern, just circling the airport, never landing. Go to him daily, ready to hear him say, wait on me, or here we go. And when, second, you are frustrated by a world perennially at war, a protracted health crisis, or a society in a seemingly bottomless moral freefall, let me commend to you the Book of Common Prayers prayer for the human family. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May you be richly blessed this day.